Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and Gareth Edwards' 2023 film about AI called The Creator. And I want to talk about what it takes to make art and how we are we have some very distinct freedom within Dungeons and Dragons that is incredibly valuable. And we need to be very careful to 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 understand that value, embrace that value, and leverage that value. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so we are incredibly fortunate. You and I are dungeon masters. We create narratives, and we use those narratives specifically to explore identity. That's what Gary Gygax built Dungeons & Dragons for. That's what we use it for, in my humble opinion. All right. We have an immense amount of freedom in doing that. And the reality is, I've been telling you for a long time that what we do as Dungeon Masters is incredibly important. And now we see a perfect example of why. And that is Gareth uh, Gareth Edwards, 2023, the creator. Warning, there will be spoilers in this content for the 2023 film, The Creator by Gareth Edwards. So let's talk about Gareth Edwards for a minute. Uh, Who is he? Well, he made the 2014 movie Godzilla, which was a failure. Right, uh, it, it is widely considered to be the worst in the Monarch, um, you know, uh, monster franchise. It really didn't hit. You can't tell me the name of the star who was in it. Any of the stars, it was Brian Cranston in it. No one was brought back from it except Godzilla himself, and he looked different when they brought him back. So that movie was, by every metric, a failure. Okay. Uh, in my humble opinion, right? So you have all that happening, right? Um, And then, uh, so Gareth Edwards did that film, right? Then, um, he did did Star Wars Rogue One and was kicked off the movie. And they brought in another director to finish it and to to redo what he had done, right? And to re-spin it and recraft it, right? So, so this is a director who makes good, who uses CGI well. There's no, no one complained about the CGI in Godzilla. No one comp- complained about the CGI in Rogue One. Um, but he's had two massive failures commercially, right? And so then he brought out this new, brand new movie, The Creator. He was given by 20th Century Fox, which was then bought by Disney. He was given. $80 million to make The Creator. The Creator is a film that is compelling, thought-provoking, beautiful, and here it is, folks, 100% commercially unviable. It is com- a commercially unviable film. So what in this movie made it completely unviable? Well, you're trying to... First of all, if you don't know, the biggest movie market in the world is America. We are bigger than any movie market. We're bigger, we're bigger than... We're arguably bigger than the rest of the world combined, right? And the reality is, if you look at the top you know, 20 movies, I don't think you'll find an international film among them, right? Tell me if I'm wrong, right? But the, and, and we crush. This is what we do, right? Like, this is what we do. Right, so the reality is we've did tremendous. We we you know we're really good at this, right? At, at at specifically making massive, hugely successful blockbusters. Right. So the the twenty twenty three the uh, Gareth Edwards twenty twenty three the creator is a huge commercial failure. This cost eighty million dollars and it made four. Million dollars. Oh, right, right. Okay, okay. So, so Gareth Edwards is making a movie specifically for American audiences. Every single movie maker in the world, if they want any chance to break a billion dollars, on oh, tell me if I'm wrong. I think I'm right about this. There's never been an international film that made a billion dollars, not once. The number of American films that have made a billion dollars, the list is too long for me to even say it within this video, right? 
So, like, this is what we do. We make billion-dollar blockbusters, right? Multi-billion-dollar blockbusters. The rest of the world's never been able to do it once. We do it like it's a layup, right? So, Gareth Edwards, like every director on the planet, was making a movie for America and American audiences. This movie paints the United States of America as the villain. Period. End of sentence. Done. You can't do that. You can't tell. And it specifically paints the nations that stand against America in this film as the heroes and the winners. You cannot do that, right? You can't, like, in what world do you think Americans are going to go to a, to a movie to see Americans painted as villains and lose? It ain't going to happen. And it didn't happen, right? Like, this, and, this, and, and at a $14 million opening, he did not learn his lessons from Godzilla. He did not learn his lesson from Star Wars Rogue Woman, and he has made the most commercially unviable film he could possibly do, right? Um, uh, so that, you know, it really was astounding, like, just how, um, you know, how, what a bad job he did, right? Uh, so, like, it, it's truly amazing, right? So this thing is completely commercially unviable, Right? Um, and, oh, let, let me list other reasons why, okay? Again, spoilers, okay? Uh, so, one, he made a movie where America's painted as the villains and America loses, right? You could do that, but you need to expect that your movie's going to be an art house flop, right? Like, it's not going to do any real numbers. There are no art house blockbusters that doesn't exist. Maybe Joker. No, like, come on, that's a that's a comic book movie. There are no art house, there are no art art house billion dollar films, right? That movie is made a billion because it's attached to Batman, right? It's not made a billion because it's because it's Jacqueline Phoenix, right? Like, you know, so yeah. All right. What was the other thing he did? He also made the movie so that the hero of the film, John David Washington's character, right, dies, literally dies at the end of the film, right? And then the magic, uh, you know, AI child descends to the nations that are fighting against America and is like, yay, we beat the evil Americans and I ha and, and my American dad is dead. Gareth Edwards, what are you thinking? Like, this is complete, this is the most commercially unviable film I have ever seen, Right? And it was done by someone who knew this would make it completely unwatchable to any, to, to money, right? He knew he was making a, a movie that was almost guaranteed not to make its money back. Astounding. Astounding. Gareth Edwards, 2023 movie, The Creator, was defeated by Paw Patrol, okay, and Saw X. That is depressing if you are a director. Right, if you're like the most hardcore slasher film you could possibly make, beat, beat my movie, and animated puppies beat my movie. People would rather see somebody. There, like this was like, people would rather watch somebody's eyes guy gouged out with a knife, or animated puppies than my film. Like this is the most commercially unviable film I've ever seen. All right, so. What we now need to remember as Dungeon Masters, right, is what is important, okay? And that is, we are not bound. We are not uh, forced to labor for commercial success. We have tables which are ready to receive the story that we have prepared for them, right, and we and it doesn't have to make money, right? The only person who has that problem is Matthew Mercer. You don't, right? Um, and actually, Matthew Mercer's the only. I think he's the only real. Matthew Mercer's the only person who ever figured out how to actually make money from a um, from a, a a stream Dungeons and Dragons game. I don't think anybody else has ever made any real money. Right, but Matthew Mercer made not only made himself a millionaire, but made other people millionaires 
quite a few. All made a, Matthew Mercer made himself a millionaire and made all his friends millionaires, right? That's never been done by any other streaming service, ever. By any other streamed Dungeons and Dragons game, ever. Period, end of sentence, right? Like, that's very clear, right? But the reality is we have this incredible freedom, right? We are not like Gareth Edwards, right? We don't have, we, we, we don't, we don't, we don't get called into a room on Monday if our movie if if our movie makes fourteen million dollars. We don't get called into a room on Monday if what we are preparing, the story we are preparing for our dungeon performers, uh, is not up to snuff. What they do is they stop showing up, right? And when that happens, and that, and that is the only real metric for whether a lot of people say, "Oh, all that matters is everybody's having fun." Do not listen to them. That is not a metric for a Dungeons & Dragons game because it can't even be measured, right? But what you can measure is do your players show up to play again, right? That is the only metric for a successful Dungeon Master. And the reality is we have also reached a point, very much reached a point, where not only do we have this situation where um, we are not bound by commercial concerns... Uh, we're not even bound by the expectations of fun anymore. Many, many tables are realizing now that you can do very serious things with Dungeons and Dragons. Recently, um, Matt Colville actually said, "Hey, you know, actually did a tweet and said, listen, I, you know, I take Dungeons and Dragons very, very seriously, and you, as the rest of the world, need to understand that this is incredibly important to me." And that, um, you know, and that I take Dun- and that that I take Dungeons and Dragons very seriously, right? And and increasingly, and like, and um, I think it's, and there also there's literally a fifth edition product being uh, created that deals directly with therapy. I'm not the only person anymore saying, hey, fun is not not the last only metric of Dungeons and Dragons. There's a lot of people who are saying, I'm investing a lot into Dungeons and Dragons, and I'm using Dungeons and Dragons to run horror and like fun is fun is for fun is for the least of the dungeon masters not the best of them right and uh yeah i think you know and and maybe fun is just for game masters not even you know if you use the term dungeon master you understand i think a lot of people are under i think a lot i think that that is i think that's the powerful thing about game masters it could be say hey you know people would just want to you know, cut goblins in half and never really use Dungeons and Dragons for anything real. Why don't you guys just shove over and use the term game master, right? So you can communicate nothing important's ever gonna happen in at your table, right? And Dungeon Masters, we can use the term that's useful. It says, hey, let's tell a powerful narrative here. Let's discuss important things. So unlike Gareth Edwards, we are not bound to a commercial master. Right, we are not. Matt, the com- commercial success is not our master, right? The dungeon is our master, right? And we bring people into it and we bring them out of it. And the reality is, unlike Gareth Edwards, we're not going to get called into a meeting on Monday and say, "Hey, why did you, why did you spend eighty million dollars to make 14? right? Like, so you know, and and and, and honestly, I think Gareth Edwards is going to have an increasingly difficult time making these kind of films because the reality is he is not he's clearly not taking notes he's not listening to any producers and he's not listening to anyone who would allow his films to be profitable right and uh, so every single word of that is my humble opinion what's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion you get in the comments and send your traffic please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium